Welcome to the second video in a series of four where we'll be exploring how to use different large language models in what's an XAI flows engine. Previous time we set up a basic text completion flow and in this video I'm going to show you how to work with the IBM Granite models. The IBM Granite models have been trained by IBM's research department on a large amount of data. They're completely open source so you would be able to run them on your own. You can also run them to IBM's Watson XAI platform, which makes it really easy to work with these models from the cloud. There are currently four models, which are trained to be open, trusted, targeted, and empowering. Even though these might be specified for enterprises, you can also use them as a developer. Currently, there are four models in the series. These are IBM 13B Chat, IBM 13B Instruct, Granite Multilingual, and also a model specifically trained on Japanese language. Of course, if you're building solutions such as retrieval augmented generation, you're going to need an embedding model, but also for a vector search, for example. For this, you can use IBM Slate embedding model, which is also part of the IBM Granite series. In this code, we're going to use Flows Engine to create a new flow specifically tailored towards working with IBM Granite. And we'll be using this flow for specific use cases such as summarization and classification. So let's head over to VS Code. In this code, I've set up a new WXFlows project. I have a TOML file which includes a text completion flow that has two steps, its template upfront and its completion which interacts with the LLM. I've also set up a small JavaScript application which needs your flows engine endpoint and API key. And in here, I'm calling my flow which is called text completion with the model IBM Granite 13B chat. Whenever you interact with a model, it's typically advised to use the prompt template that they advise you to use. So for IBM Granite, there is a base prompt template, which looks like this. So I'm going to copy this. And for my JavaScript app, where I'm consuming my flows, I'm going to be trying out this base prompt. Of course, there is a question which I need to substitute with an actual question. So I'm going to ask who is the president France. And the only thing I need to get an answer to this question is run this bit of JavaScript code. So this JavaScript code is using the WXFlows SDK, which is available for JavaScript and Python. And then the answer is printed in my terminal. You can see the name, Emmanuel Macron. He's been in office since May 2017. If we look at this JavaScript code here, you can see we're defining both the model and the base prompt inside the consumption part. But what we want to do, we want to use this inside of our flows. So I'm going to copy the, um, the base prompt and I'm going to delete it from my JavaScript code. Instead, I only want my question here. So who is the president of France? Where am I going to define the base prompt? The base prompt will be defined in my flow. So I'm going to my TOML file and you can see we have this templated prompt step which takes a parameter called prompt template, which has a variable called question. So whatever we send as a question to our text completion flow uh, will be pasted inside of this prompt template. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to paste my base prompt and I'm going to replace the question with the question variable. So this time we can make it dynamic. I'm going to save this and in here I can deploy my flow again. Once the flow is deployed, I can go back to my JavaScript app and I will be able to ask the same question again. Uh, so this time I don't have the base prompt. I just say boost the president of France. I'm going to re-execute this and I should get a similar answer as we got before because it's still using the same prompt template. And as you can see, part of it is still the same. There seems to be a bit more information on who Macron is, uh, but that's all fine. It could also differ when you use the instruct model like this. Uh, you'll probably get a sharper, shorter answer. Now you can see if we use the instruct model, we'll just get the name Emmanuel Macron. There are more things we can do. We can set the temperature or the decoding method, uh, but for that, we're going to look at a different example first. What we're going to look at is a summarization flow. 
A summarization flow is pretty similar to a flow that we saw before. The only difference is instead of adding the question like this, we're going to tell the LM to create a concise summary of the document provided, and then we're going to provide a document. So let me copy this this and then in my tomo file i'm going to create a new flow which i'm going to call summarization like this of course i need a templated prompt step again and this time i'm going to add my prompt template which looks like this and then next to the flow for prompt template i also need the completion flow copy this part and then paste it right here. Of course, I need to make sure that I'm using the correct names here. And now the only thing I need to do is redeploy this newest flow, which will give me a summarization flow. So I can run wxflows deploy. It looks at my TOML file and then deploys both of these flows. So I will have a text completion flow and also a summarization flow. In my JavaScript app, I can then use summarization as the flow name instead. And if I ask who's the president of France, it won't do much because we want to summarize some text. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to head over to the What's an XAI uh, documentation and I'm going to copy some text. In the documentation for What's an X.AI, you can find information on using IBM Granite. There are a couple of examples here for different prompting templates and also explanations on the coding method or temperature. So let me take this text here and we're going to be using this text and summarize it in our new flow. Back in VS Code, I changed the flow name to be summarization and then for a question we can paste the code that we just took from the documentation. If I run save, I can rerun my JavaScript code by running node index.js and it should print a summary of this text from the docs right here in my terminal. And as you can see, we get a single paragraph um, summarization of all of this text. There are more things we can do. For example, if you go to the documentation and you look up summarization, you can find examples of decoding methods or a temperature that we should set. We can also hard code the model name. So in here we're saying model is IBM Granite 13B Chat. We can also hard code this in case we always know that we're using IBM Granite Chat for summarization. For this, I'm going to my TOML file. There is a section here where we're passing the model name from the parameter that you set on the flow. We can replace this and we can say the model is always IBM Granite Chat V2. If I save this, I still need to redeploy my flow by running wxflows deploy. And this should make the summarization flow available again, but this time the model will be hard coded. So every summarization flow will be using the IBM Granite model. If I go to my index.js and rerun this, uh, you can see we should still get the same response because we're still using the same model, just this time it's hard-coded directly inside of our flow. For a final example, we're going to be looking at classification. I'm going to start off by copying my text completion flow and use this as the base for the new classification flow. Let's say we call this classification. We have a prompt template again, we have a model again, uh, let me update these as well. The thing we need to change is we have our prompt template here, which is still our base prompt. But of course we need a prompt for classification. I've created a prompt right here that I'm going to copy paste, but you can find the same prompt in the documentation for the IBM Granite models. And I'm going to be pasting this in my templated prompt section. And then I'm going to save this. Of course, I need to deploy this new flow as well by running wxflows deploy. And then we should have three flows. We have text completion, summarization, and classification. After deploying our flow for classification, we can go to the JavaScript app where we need to add a few examples. Uh, for example, we can 
say one piece of feedback is John Doe is the best developer I've ever seen. And we can say this is an example of positive feedback. Uh, we can also say one piece of feedback is Jane did a bad job in our team. And we can say this is negative. And then we can say a final piece of feedback. And this is the example that we want to classify. We can say uh, Fu Bar has made a great impression on all of us. And we're going to leave this one open because we want the LM via our classification flow to give us the classification for our colleague Fu Bar. I'm using the IBM Granite 13B instruct model. Uh, let me also say the decoding method should be greedy. And then we can do something like setting the temperature value like open seven, which is recommended in the documentation for the IBM Granite models. So to run this, I can run node index.js and then in my terminal, it should print the classification for a final piece of feedback, which is foobar has made a great impression on all of us. And it should be positive feedback. Let's see what the LM comes back with. As you can see, this is rated as positive. And that's how easy it is to use different models using what's an XAI flows engine. You learned how to create a custom flow that's using a different prompt. So each of the flows will use different prompts and how you can customize the prompt template and inject variables into it. Next video will be exploring Meta's Llama model. And as you might have noticed, they recently released a Llama 3.1 version. So we'll be using Llama 3.1 in the next version. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to use the comment section for asking questions or giving us any feedback or head over to Discord.